Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange and unusual stories of the Forgotten News Podcast? Hello, everyone. This is Jim. This is Kit Karen. We host the Forgotten News Podcast. On our show, we tell true stories from history, but not the stories you learned in school. We tell stories that are obscure, mysterious, weird, wild. For example, the teenage girl who committed the last stagecoach robbery in the United States in 1899. The man who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge on a bet in 1886 and survived landing in the river below. Well, he said that he did. The group of old ladies in 1893 who would secretly go out at midnight to cast stray cats and then, um, speed up their journey to heaven. The really dumb gang of crooks who unintentionally kidnapped the lieutenant governor of Idaho in 1929. The terrible saloon in New York City that somehow became a destination in the 1890s for young women to end their lives. The tragic homicide of a heroic young black man in 1962 that would have been totally forgotten except for a song. The young female lawyer who invented the entire idea of the public defender system in 1893. The farmer who vanished into thin air in front of witnesses as he simply walked across his empty dirt yard in 1889. So on any given episode, our stories might be serious, silly, or sad. But they will always be true. So, now you know pretty much everything about what to expect if you listen to the Forgotten News Podcast. We think you'll like it, so please, give us a try. We can hardly wait to have you be part of our audience. Thanks for listening. Bye. Yay! (laughs) clear the old pipes i got like sick in california stop it and like i've kind of got a cough still like since then i don't know if it's because i kind of felt like yosemite had some tainted energy but um also i'm kind of considering that maybe i was having like a post-show crash because i was getting us ready to leave town and then we drove to oregon and we were at my parents for a couple days and then we drove down to california and then we hit the condo where i knew we didn't have to pack up anything for another week so i'm kind of wondering if like oh if i hit that post-show you know, you can relax now, crash. Yeah. That, when, I can always feel when my body is starting to get sick, and, like, if I'm super stressed out or busy, I'm like, no, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to will myself to not get sick. And usually it works. But as mm-hmm. soon as you have that down moment, yep. done. That's it, when it hits. Yeah. Maybe you have the <laughs> whooping cough. The pooping cough? The whooping cough. Oh, the whooping cough. The, the whooping poop- cough. <laughs> That's better than the pooping cough. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure that once in my life I have probably coughed so hard that I pooped. <laughs> I have definitely coughed so hard that I peed myself. <laughs> it doesn't take much anymore. I haven't had a cough that did that, I don't think. But <laughs> uh. <laughs> the dog did it. The dog did it. <laughs> the dog shit my pants. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's the Booze and Spirits Podcast. It's like a drink with death! Woo! Woo! We're doing a, a, a little bit of a different format now here. Because what's happening is we're getting back in the fall season. People are going back to work. Katie's work is picking up. I'm going back to work. It's also theater season starting back up. I run a theater. So things are getting complicated. Schedules are getting messy. So what we've been trying to do is we're trying to bring in some more guests and bring in some extra hosts to try to round out things. So... 
Uh, hopefully, we'll get Katie in later in the show because she's our drink mistress. But at the time being, we have our good friend Mel here to fill in Hello. as a host. Hi, Mel. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> it's all smoky and gross in Oregon, so I don't know. I just feel that that brownish gray. Yeah. That I feel brownish gray. That's I've how I feel. Entertaining to say to that. So we're gonna move on. Um, <laughs> 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 what a downer, dude! <laughs> oh, sorry. I was supposed. To, I'm, I'm supposed to be the lively. You know, keeping everything in a positive, upbeat note. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't, Katie always kind of falls into this kind of sedate. Uh huh. Yeah. Sure. Kind of slow, calm thing when we're recording and. I don't know. I feel like you're going to be a little peppier than she is, but I don't know. I'm going to try to be a little peppier. Like, All right. you know, I I may f- fall flat on my face, but I'm sure going to give it a try. Hopefully, Katie will be with us later, because I know she specifically chose the theme for this show, because she had some boat stories she wanted to tell us, but she's unable to join us for recording right at this moment, so I'm hoping we'll be able to get her, <laughs> and I'll splice her in in a really awkward way into the episode, and she can tell her story and hopefully she came up with a drink for us too because that's kind of her job i mean i can come up with a boat drink but i don't know yeah don't look at me when it comes to alcohol i know jack shit about alcohol i know less than jack shit about (laughs) alcohol i learn less than jack shit about ghosts i yeah this is gonna be interesting we just like having mel around because she entertains us and she's good for our ego (laughs) <laughs> Yay! I think you guys are so... F- Dude, seriously, I could just sit back and listen to you guys and just giggle. It's- <laughs> I don't necessarily want to be part of the conversation. I just want to listen and bask in the funny. That's fair. And you know what? There's literally, I don't know, <laughs> 15 people who share that with you, <laughs> if our numbers are any kind of indication. Right. I listened to like five episodes in a row and it started off with, we have 30 listeners. We have 19 listeners. We have 12 listeners. We have negative 13 listeners. It's like, (laughs) Jesus, you guys, like you're supposed to be getting better and, and expanding this thing as you go, not just falling off of a goddamn cliff. Well, we're, we're something different. You are. (laughs) You are something different. As a matter of fact, for Katie's part, just sprinkle in a whole bunch of flowers. 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 I know. I don't know. The British say it really weird. And we used to, uh, I don't know, we used to have like some ads at the beginning, but those people that we were doing ads through, most of their ads now, because it's kind of doing a third party, it's like, hey, do an ad for these people. We'll give you a dollar. You know, like. Here, eat this ladybug, we'll give you a dollar. Um, (laughs) But most of them now, they also want you to, like, put a link to their product in your show notes. And no, I'm not doing that for a buck. Like, (laughs) Yeah. I will chat you up for 30 seconds for a buck. I'm not putting a link in my show notes to live there forever because I forget to take it out for a dollar. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. But I have collected, I I did think that maybe we should start doing anti-promos. Like, if we're not going to get paid for promos, then I'm going to start doing some promos for companies that aren't paying us, because fuck them. Fair enough. So, today's episode is not brought to you by eHarmony. eHarmony, join the dating app that literally double digits of people have found their true love through. eHarmony matches you with potential mates by pairing you up with people who share your town, religion, profession, hobbies, and other personality traits that would have put you in contact with them anyway if you would just turn off HBO Max and leave the house. It's like Tinder, but with the awkwardness of not knowing if they're down to fuck. (laughs) eHarmony. eHarmony. If this ad was on TV, you'd be looking at almost pretty women who have just enough wrong with their faces to come off as attainable. Or the guy with the one lazy eye. He's super cute, <laughs> but you just notice that there's, like, one eye is not it's quite It's that attainability at factor. Yes. That's what they're, <laughs> that's what, I've noticed the, that dating ads are all attainable people. I also, I saw an ad for, boy, what was it? Oh, it was for hypoallergenic uh, laundry detergent. And it's like a little girl who's running around like, oh, well, we want to make sure that she's using the right detergent because she has sensitive skin, blah, 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 right? 
But then they made sure to cast the nerdiest, weakest looking dad they could to be her dad. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, wow, you guys are really leaning into some stereotypes with these things, let me tell you. Oh, yeah, here's a really nerdy, bad gene dad who's passed on his sensitivity to this poor little girl. Aw, she's allergic to everything, like Katie. Don't get me started on the uh, psoriasis commercial where it starts off with a black couple, and then it says, is your psoriasis bat? Not bad. (laughs) They say bat. How bat is your psoriasis? Like, oh, okay, pal, let's tone that back a bit. This episode is also not brought to you by Peloton. With Peloton, you can join live real-time classes where our instructors can see your performance data and do nothing about it but try to be encouraging. It's essentially a sex line, but for exercising. Peloton, when you want all the status of paying for a personal trainer but are too afraid to show your flabby body out in public. You know there's a joke in there about how Joe Biden has one and there was some worry that they were going to be able to like hack into the White House through his Peloton. I totally missed that. That's amazing. (laughs) Have Peloton sex with Joe Biden. (laughs) That's worth the $49.95 a month. (laughs) Oh, God. I wish I'd have known about that sooner. There's a whole bit. I almost mentioned it last night, and I was like, well, I want to see where he goes with the Peloton thing first before I mention it. (laughs) Yeah, now I'm distracted because I'm just thinking of all the different ways I can... Use that information. Uh, is is next show going to be brought to us by not Peloton? <laughs> next show is going to be brought to us by not Joe Biden. So what the <laughs> next show is going to be brought to us by. And what's our catchphrase? Boat ahead, ahoy! Boat ahead, story. Boat story ahead. Boat uh, story ahead. Like full speed ahead, but nonsensical. <laughs> boat story dead ahead. All right. Um. Should we do a boat story? Do you want to do a boat story? Should I do a boat story? Who's going to do a boat story? Oh, I can do a boat story. All right. Boat story ahead, then. Boat story ahead. <laughs> so this is about the USS Salem from GhostCityTours.com. It's one of the Des Moines-class heavy cruisers ordered mm-hmm. by the U.S. Navy in 1945, which was just before the end of World War II. The Bethlehem Steel Company began its construction in Quincy, Massachusetts, Salem was the last of its class to be commissioned and is the only heavy cruiser still in standing. For 10 years, the USS Salem served as a flagship for the U.S. 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean and the U.S. 2nd Fleet in the Atlantic. And, and it served about 11 seasons as an advisor for Sabrina the Teenage Witch, if I remember correctly. That's good to know. I (laughs) never actually watched that. Yeah, me neither. But I know that they had an animatronic cat named Salem, so I'm going to assume that there's a relationship there. I'm sure there is. Maybe the cat was haunted, and that's how the animatronics worked. I don't know. <laughs> I have I have all sorts of questions about the Hall of Presidents now, but go on. <laughs> Okie dokie, then. <laughs> uh, the warship was launched at the beginning of the Cold War when tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union were at an all-time high. Although the heavily armed military vessel never had to fire its weapons, its impressive battery was enough to deter possible attacks. In 1959, which was the year my mom was born, just so you know, after its station in the Greek coast... <laughs> and, and, and her maiden name was... And- and the city she was born in was, and the last four digits of her social are. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I really, like, I want to answer all those weird questions that I see, because sometimes it's kind of fun answers, but yet, you know that you shouldn't, because <laughs> whatever. Because guess. people are gathering information so they can get in your bank account. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But I want to answer the question because sometimes it's fun. If you had a dollar for every digit in your mom's phone number, how much money would you have? (laughs) Anyway, back to the story. So, 59, mom's birth year. After it was stationed in the Greek coast, the USS Salem was decommissioned and transported to the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard to become a member of the Atlantic Reserve Fleet. It wasn't until late 1994 when it made its way back to Quincy, its birthplace, where it was fully restored. Today, the warship serves as a historical museum with exhibits detailing our military's maritime past. 
The USS Salem is a significant historic and paranormal site. After housing the victims of the tragic 1953 Ionian earthquake that ravaged Greece's west coast, strange sightings, smells, and noises began to prop up from all corners of the warship. If you put a bunch of Greeks on board that are cooking, it's going to have some weird smells to begin with. Oh, dude, they were... The the Greeks were cooking something fierce. (laughs) Majority of the visitors to the USS Salem experienced some sort of odd encounter. So the deployment 1953 in the Ionian Islands on the west coast of Greece, they were sent there to aid disaster victims. The Great Kefalonia Earthquake, as is often called, was merely one of the over 100 earthquakes that shook the region that year. Good grief. Yeah. The earthquake is still remembered as one of the most devastating disasters in Greek history, measuring a staggering 7.3 on the Richter scale and causing the untimely deaths of approximately 600 people. Israel, Britain, and the United States were some of the first countries to respond after after the catastrophe, sending aid and essentials to the island. I'll tell you what, the official Richter scale... Measurement for the Northridge earthquake in 94 was like Mm 6.4, and that shit was terrifying. (laughs) I can't even imagine what a 7.3 would actually feel like. So the USS uh, Salem offered significant emergency relief. Uh, It operated as a hospital after the earthquake, helping the injured and storing the unfortunately large number of deceased locals in its morgue, the morgue that's inside the ship. Yeah. Even cruise ships have a morgue. You bet you bet Do they? Uh, battleship. Oh, yeah. Cruise ships have morgues. That's the creepiest shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Fairly sure I didn't make that up. I think how, that's real. How would you like to go out to sea and just always know that there's a nice cold freezer underneath you specifically for storing your dead, lifeless corpse? Well, I'd rather have that than either A, they just drop them overboard, or B, they just like s- <laughs> stick them in their in their cabin <laughs> rot and stink when you're next door <laughs> drop them overboard you go over them with the rudder all spinning and a <laughs> little bit of meat flies up while somebody's trying to do their i'm king of the world we just threw them in a raft and kind of towed it behind us till we got back there. sure <laughs> that could actually work you know i, I yeah if you want to to that if you want to attract a legion of seagulls behind you yeah (laughs) what do i care i'm dead put me on display i don't care let's creep out the squares there you go (laughs) it's unclear how long the warship cared for earthquake victims but it is known that many took their last breath aboard the salem earthquakes can cause gas lines to break and explode making fires an unfortunate side effect of the seismic events the number of fire related deaths on the ship might explain the unexpected ash scent that hits the majority of USS Salem visitors spirits of those who passed away aboard the life saving sea witch are st- said to still linger aboard the navy ship's third ward room that's ward not war ward ward ward, ward. Ward room or mess hall. Like seeing to the beaver ward. Okay. Leave it to beaver reference. Oh, I'm too young for that. I'm only 29. See, the, you got to hang out with me. I'll make you feel young because I'll, <laughs> I'll reference shit that nobody should remember. Right. <laughs> this uh, third mess hall is said to have the most activity as it stands right above the makeshift And you said, you said mess hall, not meth hall, right? I just want to... <laughs> This is not Douglas <laughs> County. I think they're Coke people out in Massachusetts. They're classier. <laughs> the ward room stands right above the makeshift morgue read freezer that once held approximately 400 Greek casualties. This same area also reportedly houses a young Greek girl, a dark, taunting entity, and a violent hellhound with a heart-stopping growl. Fun. I know, right? Like, this is the only reference to the Hellhound, but I really would have liked a little bit of extra information. Like, why was there? Is this a ghost of a dog? Is it just a random Hellhound that showed up just for poo-poos and ha-has? Like, I don't know. I need to look into Hellhounds because Katie brought up Hellhounds, well, Hell Dogs, but Hellhounds on the last episode, too. And, like, I feel like I don't know nearly enough about them, or at least as much as I should. I know jack shit about them other than what they told me on Supernatural. I can tell you what they told me on Supernatural, but I don't I don't, think I don't that- know that that's always 100% accurate. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, I know a few people who 
like really study this stuff and they're like, I can't watch that show because it just pisses me the fuck off. Uh-huh. Also, they did, they did an episode where they went to Concrete Washington. It was nice and clean. So I tell you right now that that show is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, USS so, Salem. They got hellhounds and shit. Hellhounds and shit. There's a recurring presence in the anchor wind glass room, a man named John, who used to work in maintenance before his death. John Spector was the first USS Salem tour guide, appearing to visitors in full human form. His presence was unknown until oh, guests began- John's John Spector. John's like, Spector. Okay, I heard John Spector, like that was his name. I'm like, come on, that's too easy. <laughs> John Spe- John Spector's Spector. <laughs> Don't know if his. I, I think we're just going to make his last name Spectre just it to is make now my Spectre. life he is John really, Spectre. really complicated. John okay. Spectre's Spectre was the first USS Salem tour guide appearing to visitors in full human form. Well, and as a tour guide, he would have to inspect things. So he's Inspector John Spectre Spectre. <laughs> I'm going to just let you say that because there's no way it's coming out of my mouth properly the first time. It's going to sound like a bunch of gibberish, and then I'm going to have to go hide in a corner for a few days while I flog myself. There was another commercial I noticed as the Invisalign commercials. Now they're talking about the Invisalign aligner. And I was thinking about maybe that might be too much on your teeth, so you'd have to create a liner to go in there, so you'd have the Invisalign aligner liner. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... I'm. I'm just going to check out of everything, make everything your problem. Wow. <laughs> Great. You're welcome. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Uh, among the other exciting warship residents, we find the ghost of a neat cook. I have no idea what a neat cook is, but it sounds neat. That maintains the kitchen area and a man- One that found a cool rock. Yes. <laughs> neat cook. He neatly cooks with his neat rock. And there's a man in the mess hall that drags and overturns chairs. Believed to be one of the Ionian earthquake victims, the Burning Man has been described as a specter who smells like death- he is thought to be one of the many who unfortunately succumb to their fatal fourth degree burns aboard the ship. Ghost tour guides often spot the Burning Man in the same room where the, where the ship's morgue once stood, which is believed to be where he died. The end. This place has some cool ghosts, man. Right? And is that is it currently moored somewhere? Like, or did you say? Uh, yeah, it's in Quincy, Massachusetts, and people can right. visit it and all that happy coo, fun coo, stuff. Coo, coo, coo. The reason I ask is because my ship is also a retired USS Navy ship. Is it the Enterprise? It is not the Enterprise. I, well, I did cover the Enterprise in the 4th of July episode, very very lightly. I don't remember that, but I'm going to yes, take your the, word for it. The ship that Benedict Arnold stole from the British <gasps> I was do remember the Enterprise. that now. That's yes. right. I need to get back to that because I definitely want to write a play about Benedict Arnold and, and Ethan Allen because that was my favorite shit ever. <laughs> um, no, but I am talking about the USS Constellation. The US Const USS Constellation was built in 1797, and it was the U.S. Navy's first ship built under commission, the first one that they built on their own. It was a 176-foot frigate, had a wooden hull, three masts. A wooden hull? Hull, H-U-L-L. Not a wooden oh, hole. Hole. <laughs> I thought it was a wooden hole. A wooden what do hole. you put in your wooden hole aboard the USS Constellation? Dear Liza, dear Liza. <laughs> had a wooden hole, three masts, and 36 guns. It was designed specifically for speed. It was given sharp bow lines and earned the nickname the Yankee Racehorse. In 1853, it was rebuilt as a sloop of war. So there's a lot of uh, legends and rumor over the years that talk about how much of the original constellation made it onto the new constellation. It turns out not very much. There are some pieces of the uh, old frigate in the Sloop of War, but not as much as a good storyteller would have hoped. Mother frigate. <laughs> yeah. Over its time, it's fought pirates, slave traders, Barbary Corsairs, and the French. <laughs> And the French. And the French. <laughs> Do the French ever fight? Do they yes. fight back or they just hang out yes. in the background? You know what? And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna defend the French here. The French catch Why? a lot of sh well, because they catch a lot of shit for kind of rolling over for the Germans in World War II. That's where they kind of get their surrender monkey 
identity from. Surrender monkey. But they also did, like, the brunt of the fighting in World War One, and their entire country was still recovering. Like, they were in no position to fight back when World War Two happens. And, and even after they surrendered right away, they also were one of the biggest civilian resistance leaders in the war. So everybody get off the French's dick for a minute, huh? Did I see a drunk history about the French resistance? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen them all, maybe. Or something. No, it was Star Trek. Never mind. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's an episode I, of Star I, Trek Voyager. <laughs> I want to live in a world where I confuse Star Trek for drug history. That's that's all I want for my retirement days. Let's watch drug history. Turn on Captain Janeway. (laughs) So the USS Constellation served in five major wars between the Civil War and World War II. It was officially retired in 1955, and it's been placed in permanent dock in Baltimore, Maryland since. Why does the East Coast get all the ships? Um, well, I don't know. I me mean, neither. I tried to find something about the uh, naval ship that's in OMSI in Portland, but they really didn't have much of anything. Is there a naval ship there? I thought they just had a submarine. They got a ship too? Oh, no, I guess it is a submarine. Oh, What's okay. the di- I don't know the difference. I, oh. I just nod and smile. <laughs> One goes under the water on purpose? Oh, I thought they all <laughs> were able to go under the water if they needed to. I don't know. Don't ask me things. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about nothing. That's that's my role here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just keep in the back of my mind that you mix up drunk history with Star Trek, and that's just gonna be <laughs> the baseline for anything you say now at this point. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ghost sighting started soon after the constellation's permanent docking. It was docked next to the Navy submarine Pike. There's another Star Trek reference. Um <laughs> Yes, there is. Yes, yes. And uh, when it was the Pike was docked next to it, several of the crew members of the Pike saw ghost lights on board the Constellation. They'd hear strange noises, and they even saw apparitions moving about on board. The ghosts are said to be most active after midnight, uh, especially between after Christmas. After midnight, we don't let, let it all hang out. Something, something. Down. Down. something. something. <laughs> yeah, not a karaoke show, thank God. So it's it's after midnight is when they're most active, especially between Christmas and New Year's Day, you know, because everyone just wants to take that week off. It's kind of a lost week anyway. What's the point? <laughs> um, but people do report seeing unknown people walking around the decks or peering out the windows all hours of all days. Most of the manifestations are usually preceded by the smell of the gunpowder. Fun enough? At least it's not the smell of burning flesh. Yeah, that's yeah. gunpowder is much better than burning flesh. <laughs> The Constellation hosts mini lantern tours and even hosts sleepover nights. So if you want to go there and go looking for ghosts yourself, one of the sleepover guests reported being kept up all night by banging pots and pans and accused the museum director of doing it himself. (laughs) Um, But then he learned the next morning that all the pots and pans have been removed from the ship and are stored in on land in the nearby museum. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Stupid autocorrect. Hans Holzer, who my autocorrect changed to Hansen Holzer. <laughs> Hansen Holzer and John <laughs> Spector Mbop. Spector. Mbop, Mbop. Investigated the ship with his psychic slash witch Sybil Leak and wrote about it in two of his books. And uh, like a lot of the Holzer cases, the constellation has been investigated by the TV show, The Holzer Files. I watched the episode. There wasn't anything particularly of uh, insight there that I got from it, just kind of the normal ghost hunt TV show stuff. Did you say Sybil leaks? Like she leaks something? No, Sybil leak. Oh, singular. Leak. Singular. Yes. She has a single, singular leak. <laughs> she has a single leak in her wooden hole. <laughs> got a list of the ghosts that are uh, reported on the constellation. Neil Harvey seems to be the most seen one. He's often seen on the Orlop deck, which the Orlop deck is apparently the deck below the main deck. Okay. I I have to. If I'm going to use these words, I'm going to learn what they mean. He was sentenced to die by his captain, Thomas Truxton, the uh, first captain of the Constellation. Some stories say he was sentenced for cowardice. Uh, some of the others say that he was found asleep at his guard post. Whatever it is, the story all confirms two things. First of all, that he was ran through by Truxton with his sword. 
Now, whether or not he survived the running through does change from story to story, but they all confirmed that he got ran through by a sword, and they also confirmed that he was then tied across the opening of the cannon, which was fired, blowing him to pieces. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Which apparently was a common punishment for the U.S. and the British at that time in history. <laughs> oh my god. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, I, I, I have no words, like... The cannon <laughs> yeah. firing through your spine. I I really hope the run through killed him first. Let's hope, right? Like everybody's fallen asleep at their post. Let's be honest. <laughs> so uh, Neil usually appears just as a shimmering mass. Reportedly, he doesn't see himself as a whole person anymore after the whole cannon. <laughs> 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 he doesn't have phantom limbs. He just. He, you know, he's 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 got phantom mush, is what he's got, <laughs> and uh, I I don't know where they got this information. I guess from psychics. Uh, is apparently, he seeks redemption for his military offenses. Is why he hangs around the ship for sleeping, for sleeping, for you know, getting in the way of their cannon. I guess. I guess. <laughs> So the captain that sentenced Neil to die, Captain Truxton, he's also believed to be seen on board. Truxton commanded the Constellation from its launch in 1801. He wrote drill manuals and a book on tactical methods, which have become a mainstay of the U.S. military. So the ghost that they think is him, there's a ghost that's often seen on the mainstay deck, and that's the one that they attribute to being Truxton. And I'm in the process of sending you a picture right now. So, I mentioned the Pike. Lieutenant Commander Alan Ross Bru- Bruham? I'm not sure how to say Bruha-ha? this name. B-R-O-U-G-H-A-M. Broham? He's Broham. His name Bro-ham. is Broham. Broham. Yes. Bro-ham. Lieutenant Commander Alan Ross Broham, on board the Pike, took a picture of, quote, an entity of an 18th or 19th century officer that was described as having a bluish-white radiancy, carrying an old-fashioned uniform with gold stripes on his trouser, wearing a cocked hat, and carrying a sword. So I did just message you that picture, and we'll put it in the show notes. So you can kind of see the leg of something coming through yeah. there. It's, yeah. and, and that gold stripe down the pants is very, very prominent. Yeah, but also, like, there's also a whole lot of that person not being there, despite the fact that there's parts of him there. So <laughs> that's kind of fishy for a photograph. I mean, it's very clearly a shoe and a leg, if nothing else. Yeah. And then not much else. And if you look at the wheel next to it, it's about to the right scale for a person. So it is. It's pretty interesting. It's like the disembodied torso of the other dude. Maybe the other, maybe it's the same guy. Like, his upper half appears in one place and his bottom half appears in the other place and the middle stuff is, I don't know, set dressing. Maybe the two of them are just cursed for eternity to try to put themselves back together again like Humpty Dumpty and not get their parts all mixed up and then, you know, they can move on to the great year after or whatever. There you go. Only over Christmas. Only over Christmas. Because that week's kind of a loss anyway. Yeah. Um, another ghost is Carl Hansen. He was a former cook in the Royal Navy, but in his later years, he took a job as a watchman over the Constellation in its docking, and he held that job until 1965. Over the years, Carl's ghost has been spotted on the ship playing cards. Sometimes he answers questions or gives tours to people. There is a tale of a priest who came on board and was having trouble getting any of his questions asked because all the guides were attending to other people. And he met this guy named Carl who showed him around and told him where things were. And he later went in to report to the management what a wonderful tour guide Carl was, only to find out that Carl had been dead for years. <laughs> At one point, they had a Sea Scout party. I forgot to look that up. I'm assuming it's just like a maritime Girl Scout or something. Sure. Let's go with that. Sure. All right. Do they make cookies? I don't know. I think they make crab cakes. Oh, I love crab cakes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway, he was spotted at a Sea Scout party sitting next to a young girl at her table and smiling at her. Hello, pretty girl. Pretty living girl. And then I got a few just kind of like quick hits here. Uh, I mentioned Hans Holzer and Sybil Leek. Uh, Sybil, his psychic, reported the ghost of a young boy who was a surgeon's assistant who got murdered on the Orlop deck by two other sailors in the 1820s. How did he end up in on the ship in the first place? I don't know. Well, it, it, he was supposed to be a surgeon's assistant, I guess. But he was a young boy. Yeah. I mean, like 11 <laughs> is, is about the age they estimate. 
Yeah, I guess back then you didn't go to medical school. You just sort of learned it as you went. So yeah, apprenticeships. <laughs> you, yeah, you you know clean someone's bloody scissors for him, and that's how you learned. Well, no, no, no. You you keep the scissors bloody, and you put them in your velvet-lined pouch, and then you use those same scissors on somebody else, because that's what means that you're a good doctor. That's how you maintain the taste, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's like not, cl- not cleaning your barbecue grill. Exactly. Um, this was before viruses and bacteria existed. That's right. <laughs> There's also reports of the ghost of a young sailor who hung himself. Apparently, he's seen sadly floating across the guns and forecastle deck. That's sad. There's a tail of a hand who was up on the top sail mast, and it suddenly swung in and crushed him and rained blood down on everyone who was below. A hand? Well, not like a hand, like a, a ship hand. Oh, like a, a ha- ship hand. Okay, like a deck hand or something. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I, I'm thinking about just a hand, like, you know, just- He's, he's one of the ancestors of the hamburger helper hand, that's- that's what we're talking about. He was up there. He got hit by the mast and rained all sorts rained, of rain blood down, and it made a great meal. That's excellent. <laughs> how this. Um, so when the ship was still active, a prisoner who was in the brig reporting seeing two of his deceased shipmates dancing around and begging him to sing. <laughs> <laughs> which which I guess he eventually relented, and then a corporal came in to quiet him and reported seeing a stack of pots and pans in the room floating through the air. The pots and pans that were left on land? Well, this was, no, because that was after it had been decommissioned, and this was while it was still in business. Oh, okay. So, they, so then they, at that point in time, they would have had the pots and pans on board. Okay. I wonder what he sang for them. F- for cooking their hamburger helper. Um, I'm going to guess... Um, did they have songs back then? Like songs with have. words? <laughs> I was I was gonna make a I was gonna do a joke song, but I completely lost it. So we're just gonna go with Total Eclipse of the Heart is what they were. <laughs> That's all I got right now. And the last one is that when it was first brought into dock, they brought in repairman to restore the ship. Uh, and the repairmen kept hearing moans and cries below the deck while they were working. Happy or off- sad. Like sad, oh. mournful, like, and so they would go below deck to try to figure out the source of the noises, but they never did. So that's creepy crap. Yeah, well, that's what we're here for, right? Yeah, I guess. I wonder Creep how much out. people pay to like spend the night on the ghost ship. I don't know. I will I give know. you a thousand dollars to scare the bejesus out of me. I don't know if it's that much. I don't know. I feel like East Coast has a lot more haunted locations competing with each other, so the supply and demand is a bit skewed from over here on the West Coast. Should we do an introduction since you've only just now joined the episode? Well, I mean, I don't know if we need to do a full, like, hey, everybody, up introduction. It's just going to be like a, hey, Katie's here now. Hey, there's that bitch. And Mel's gone. Mel's gone. Kate's here. You'll never see him in the same spot at the same time. You know what? I went to Oregon and I saw you and Mel and I didn't see you two in the same place at the same time. You know what? I haven't seen me and Mel in the same place at the same time since Comic-Con, so. <laughs> and that was, what, February? No, September 2019? Uh, September 2019. That sounds right, yeah. Yeah. So that's the last time I've seen Mel and I in the same room at the same pl- time. So. And even then, I didn't see you two together very much. Because I'm Batman. I mean, we say same room, but that was like a convention center room. That was, you know, there was a lot of square footage there to cover. It's true. And a lot of people were real stinky, so I was like zigging and zagging a lot. <laughs> I was pregnant. I was in like my. Oh yeah, I, I forgot know, about I'd that. I made it to my second. I was about to say, yet. like, how do you notice a smell? But yeah, I forgot you're pregnant. I'm, you smelled everything. Okay, first of all, I smell everything all of the time. I don't know if you know this is my superpower. <laughs> like I've literally walked. I remember one time, like walking outside at my old job and being like, "Why does it smell like so and so's here? They quit." <laughs> Lo and behold, so and so was there. <laughs> was an ex so we won't name names Fair. so we're talking about boats yeah well you had the big boat story you had the the boats and hoes track of the album or whatever we're gonna call this yeah you're the one who wanted to do. well i you said boats and hoes last episode i didn't realize that was a thing like a boats and hoes party in the two weeks since or three weeks or whatever it was since we recorded that i go oh that's a real thing she didn't just come up with that i mean i make up some weird shit but no that's definitely something i just yeah. straight stole also i'm on a boat is a real thing i know i'm on a boat's a thing okay 
That's and lonely, baby on a boat lonely island is, or whatever. That, yeah, I don't baby pay, on a boat. Is I don't a, pay much attention to, but I caught that. But McDonald, yeah, thing. Yeah. So boats and hose caught me off guard. Yeah. Before we get into my story, I was listening to I think the most recent episode of the Golden Ghouls podcast, mm-hmm. and they were talking about the Queen Mary. The city of L.A. is, like, in talks right now about whether or not they are going to keep maintaining it and do the needed repairs or if they're just going to sink her. And I'm real sad. That's lame. Yeah. Like, if they unmoored her, would she be seaworthy? Like, could, like, she sail up to San Francisco or someplace if someone else wanted to take her on? Well, I think they said they need, like, up to $200 million in repairs and maintenance. Hmm. So, I mean... And they're not getting that from ghost hunting, apparently. Because we know how much money ghost hunters have to throw at things. Well, in there, um, like, I know it was closed for COVID. I'm hoping... Sean and I are supposed to go up to LA to see his grandpa, and I'm hoping, hoping I can stay on it. If the, I'm hoping the hotel portion's reopened. I haven't checked recently. Maybe McMinimins will buy it. They never buy anything I want them to buy. <laughs> They didn't buy the, I think it was the Kanaka Ferry. Oh, yeah. Well, I really wanted them to buy Uh, that. You know, you can only do so much with a ferry. It's kind of limited space. The Queen Mary, there's a lot of footage there. You could do something. Yeah, but you could have a ferry bar. A bar ferry. (laughs) I suppose. (laughs) I've been to some ferry bars in Seattle, and they're great too, but that's a different kind. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, there is a ferry bar in Ashland. Well, it's a Shakespeare bar. So it's S. Yeah, it's like yeah. the winged, winged fairies. Like mustard seed and pea blossom. Yeah. Like, yeah. I like that you specifically skipped the one I played. It's fine. I don't remember it's which fine. one you played. Those are the... Cobweb, oh, okay. obviously. I, I was I was scraping the bottom of the barrel to get pea blossom out, so <laughs> mustard seed's the only one I remember. Cause, Cobweb. Jeez. Because I saw a production once and there was a hot girl playing mustard seed. That's why I remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know. Save the Saint Mary. Okay, Mel, We're Mel and I have Patreon. Been, Mel and I have I been know. saying uh, boat story ahead. That's been our catchphrase for the episode. It doesn't make any sense, but we've been shouting it all the same. That checks out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to change the Patreon to save this. Instead of give us a million dollars and stay in our haunted mansion, mm-hmm. give us two hundred million dollars, stay in our haunted boat. Okay, that's fair, right? I mean, it is. We haven't got anyone to buy it on the million dollar one yet, though, so. Maybe they want it on Mel's feet picks. Maybe they've just been waiting for those. Maybe, I don't know. She's half Japanese. But, yeah. Mel never likes when I sign her up for stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> you sign her up to take feet picks and things like that. <laughs> I was just going to, and I was going to roofie her one time. <laughs> In the middle of the day while I was watching her. Yeah. It wasn't going to be like she gets murdered. <laughs> I just wanted her to, like, make some bad choices. <laughs> Hashtag bad decisions. Club. She's not very good at being a fire sign sometimes. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> okay I got to find my I gotta find my story. So. A needle pulling this, thread. This may, be, this may be a little weird, but my ghost ship that I want to talk about is in Wyoming. Obviously. <laughs> That's right. You said something about that. I forgot about that. Obviously. <laughs> Tell me it just showed up there one day and nobody knows how it got there, because that would be the perfect <laughs> situation. We're going to talk about the, I think it's the Platte River. Maybe the Plate River, but I'm pretty sure it's the Platte River. It has two T's. Yeah, it's Platte. Platte. So this is apparently not a super well-known story. Like, Wyoming has ghost stories, for sure. Oh, like, yeah. it has ghost town. Like, yeah, yeah. it's in Tombstone. No, Tombstone, Wyoming? That's Arizona. Yeah. But I think I think the herbs ignore were, me. I think the herbs the herbs I think went to Wyoming at some point. They went the there or they were from there. One of the two. I forget exactly. Wild Wild West. I don't know. Yeah. Things are happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghosts and hoes. <laughs> boats and ghosts. Ghosts and hoes. And boats and boats and ghosts. And mersey dots and dozy dots. Hose will. Have run you ever your seen a ghost car. twerk on a on a yacht? It's just weird. <laughs> Get into it. Ectoplasm flings everywhere. <laughs> wow. I just left the vagina colonies, you know, where I'm thinking ectoplasm is flying from. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, they're made of it. It's not like there was a discharge. Like, <laughs> Well, that's how I was picturing it. I know it. you were, and you're and a horrible, horrible person. And their little ghost 
well, what part of your body do you fling around when you're twerking? <laughs> My ecto maker. Shake your ecto maker. Shake your ecto maker. Funky soul, funky soul. All right. Platte River. About every 25 years. About every 25 years. I would like this better if it was a like, specific, like, yeah. headless horseman sort of, like, some, routine. Some, but something we can pin down and go investigate. Exactly. The first reported sighting of this death ship was in... Yeah, sorry. Transition here. It's not just a ghost ship. It's a death ship. I was going to say, like, because Mel and I both did, like, real ships with ghosts on them. Like, you're doing an actual, like, phantom ship that appears. I believe so. It sounds. We're going to pretend I read the story in detail before I tell you about it. (laughs) Instead of just... (laughs) Gave you an extra week to record. (laughs) Well, I had my story ahead of time, <laughs> and I'm I'm like three weeks behind on schoolwork, so that's right. what my non-baby time has been devoted to. <laughs> trying not to die, and trying to get caught up on homework. So you're wasting all your right. time. You could get all caught up on homework and die, and then what good is it? I know. Okay. So I did find this story a few places, but I'm okay, going to give this, this... Don't talk while you're moving your mic, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I get. <laughs> yeah. Over a hundred years ago, a trapper named Leon Weber reported his encounter with the spectral ship. At first, all he saw was an enormous ball of fog. He rushed to the river's edge to get a closer look, and even tossed a stone at the swirling mass. That sounds dumb. Why would you... I'm not sure Leon Weber was very bright. I was just um, thinking that if this was, you know, a modern occurrence and a boat rolled up and there was lots of fog pouring off of it, you would just think Snoop was in town. Or anyone in I'm I'm willing to bet that most people in Oregon can't keep up with Snoop. I'm sorry. To say. That's true. But I mean, if you get a large group of Oregonians together okay. on a boat, maybe there's fog. Yeah, a, well, a fog-like substance. Yeah. Well, if they're from especially if, if everybody's fucking vaping. Well, I was gonna say if if they're from the north end of the state, it'll be more vape than smoke, yeah. but, which is more Let fog-like. Me my douche flute. It immediately took the form of a sailing ship. Its mast and sails covered in silvery sparkling frost. Weber could see several sailors, also covered in frost, crowded around something lying on the ship's deck. When they stepped away, affording him a clear view, he was stunned to see it was the corpse of a girl they'd been looking at. Looking closer, the trapper recognized her as his fiance. Imagine his shock when he returned home a month later to learn that his beloved had died the same day he'd seen the frightening apparition. There was a second sighting along the North Platte River in 1887. The mist on the river always gets thicker right before the ship appears. Cattleman Gene Wilson was rounding up his herd near the river when his dog became... Became barking? (laughs) Words are hard. When his dog began barking. (laughs) The dog just morphed into an arf, arf. (laughs) It just uh, said, fuck this, I'm an automatopoeia. (laughs) Arf, arf. His dog began barking, mm-hmm. also wildly. Spooked, his horse wouldn't go near the riverbank and even tried to run away. After chasing down his horse, he tied him to a scrub pine and hiked the few yards to the river on foot. He is quoted as saying that what he saw set my nerves a tingle. <laughs> See, there were hoes on the boat. <laughs> there, nearly motionless on the quickly moving current of the river, was a fully rigged sailing vessel that seemed to be formed of the frozen sparkling mist that surrounded it. Again, a crew was on deck, but this time the captain motioned to them to lower a frost-covered piece of canvas that was suspended by the ropes at its four corners. As the bundle reached the deck and a sailor drew the cloth back, Wilson's blood ran cold when he saw his wife's face on the corpse lying there. The ship vanished when he screamed in terror. Though he wasted no time in racing home, he found his home burned to ashes and his wife lying dead about a hundred yards from the smoldering remains of the house. It would be another 25 years before the death ship was reported to be seen again. A third man claimed to claim have... (laughs) The third man to claim to have seen the spectral ship had not heard of the previous reports. Victor Hebe... Hebe. That's probably German. It's probably Hebe. That was not German. I don't know what I'm saying. (laughs) That sounded like a Japanese Sinshin show is what that sounded like. (laughs) Hyberman! Anyway, he'd taken a smoke break from chopping firewood near the bank of the North Platte River. Platte River. I should pick a lane here. As he held a match to his pipe bowl, he noticed the bank of the fog had appeared to come out. 
Jesus Christ, what is wrong with me right now? <laughs> That's why your homework's going so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a factor. <laughs> All right. Victor Heave had taken a smoke break from chopping firewood near the bank of the North Plate River. Platt. <laughs> All right. I might just throw this up immediately, but Mommy's going to have some vodka and see if it makes her brain better. <laughs> this isn't my water. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was sealed. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to preempt anything here, but my mind's kind of racing. Like, have you seen the news story about the guy who who he and his girlfriend were driving a van camping across country? And- oh, yeah, and then he obviously killed her and left her somewhere and then drove home like nothing happened? Yeah, yeah. Like, the, she, really she, was, the- she was last seen in the vicinity of the Tetons, which is in Wyoming. Did he see a ghost ship? Oh. Oh. I mean... They released some body cam footage today of a police interaction from them having a fight where the cops were called on the trip. Yeah, I did did see that. Well, and here's the thing, and I know this from when I went to Yellowstone a couple of years ago. You know this from traveling with your wife. Yes, there is a spot in Yellowstone. Where it's legal to kill someone? Well, it's not legal, it's just you can't... There's a loophole in the system where you can't be tried for it. (laughs) Well, because, yeah, there's no one to stand on a jury there. Exactly. Because of the Um, way the jurisdictions break down, there's no one who's eligible. You think my ass doesn't know about that? (laughs) I'm explaining it for our audience. (laughs) Do we have one of those? No, but someday someone might unearth this, and we want them to think we had one. I saw also his family was not commenting, and then one of them said that they believe he suffered a mental break. Or a psychological break, and they were standing behind him. <laughs> that's that's not how you stand beside you behind your son. You, you, you deny, you deny, say, deny. Come on, I, I, come on. I, I'll take you down to the police station. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, turn you in. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna do the right thing here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try Victor Hebe GB again here. Victor Hebe had taken a smoke break from chopping firewood near the bank of the North Plate. Plat, 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 plat. Plat, 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 river. Chopping firewood near the bank of the North Platte River. As he held a match to his pipe bowl, he noticed a bank of fog that appeared to come out of nowhere, and it slowly moved down the river toward him. As it came closer, Hebe was amazed to see the swirling mist begin to take the form of a sailing ship covered in ice. A sail blocked Victor Heap from getting a clear view, but he could see that there was a crew standing on deck. He could also hear voices. He claims to have heard a man's voice asserting that he was innocent, and another man's voice responding that they were only carrying out their duty. At that point, the sail blocking Victor's view was drawn up, and the scene he witnessed was chilling. On the forward deck stood a gallows with the man's body hanging from it. At that point, the ship was less than 20 feet from the bank where Heeb stood, and he got a direct look at the face of the man slowly swaying at the end of the noose. It was his best friend who had been tried, and Heeb felt wrongly convicted of murder. The last Victor had heard, his friend had escaped from prison. He would later find out that the friend had been captured and put to death the same day as Heeb encountered the death ship. I just really hope you're pronouncing that name right, because that's also like a derogatory term for a Jewish person, so... <laughs> so I just really hope that's his name. <laughs> I mean, it's probably Heba, <laughs> but it's Americanized, so it's probably Heep. Could be. When he was in Germany, it was probably... Heba. 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 It's an interesting thing to note that the sightings were all during the day. None of these were nighttime ghost ship sightings, which, you know, would make it a little more easy to write off. The Cheyenne Bureau of Psychological Research is credited as the organization that tracks the reported sightings in a handful of books document the few reports that exist on the death ship of the North Platte River. So they do think that it comes more during autumn. Uh But I don't know if you want to see the ship because, if I mean, it's a death omen. Well, but it's, I mean, it's not you. It's just somebody you love. I don't want people I know to die. Well, I don't want my loved ones to die. (laughs) There's stories that there's been 
additional sightings during the 20th century, but they are not officially documented. So mm. those are the three stories. So we don't have a timeline on when to expect the next one is about, do we? I guess we're just going to have That's to. what I wanted to know. I wanted to know yeah. how these years break down and when is the next one. I know, because I told you, like, approximately 25 years only helps us so much. I know. But yeah, I'm just really impressed that there is not only a death ship in a river, it's in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Shows up during the day. Tends to come in autumn. So why is it so frozen? I mean, there are some concepts of the afterlife and hell that it's more yeah, that it's more frozen than burning. Well, and there's, you know, the boatman that takes ferries you to that underworld. Was he cold? I don't know. Oh, but okay. he's got a boat. He does have a boat. And probably some hose. He's on a boat. That's pretty cool. We had some... We got some good stories. I know you haven't heard mine and Mel's yet, but we got some good ghosts out of this one. I know. I just got to I just got to hope for the best. Yeah. No. Be all right. Um, do you have a boat drink? So, I haven't. I'll work, I'll work this out, as per usual. <laughs> but my thought is, since this is like a death omen, that I think I'm going to do like a darkly colored drink. Uh -huh. And I think... Like we said, I haven't heard your stories, but I think of ghostly ships and I think of pirates. Okay. They correspond. Mel and I both did naval ships, so. But, well, <laughs> then rum works for this, too. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to do dark rum. I think I'm going to do either a dark rum and, like, black raspberry or dark rum and, like, Uzo. cream de cassis. So, like, current liquor. Okay. I'm not doing Uzo, because it's not yummy, and I don't want to drink it. <laughs> I did consider it. Yeah. But it's clear. So that ruins this plan. Copy. And it tastes like Uzo. <laughs> Which ruins all plans. I will happily eat some shawarma. <laughs> or some lamb. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times there's lamb in the shawarma, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Nothing. Hi, Theo. What happened? What happened out there? Nothing. Just came to see no, if you heard it. I just, just want to check on you, Mom. <laughs> we'll make sure you're okay. Sounded like something rough was going on out there. <laughs> Fucking dog. All right. Rummy, boaty, maybe currenty. Rum and some berries. It's probably some other things. We serve it in a gravy boat. Will that make it more of a boat drink? I don't know. I don't know where my gravy boat is. I think, oh. it's, I think it's in the shed somewhere in a box. Of I think you say in the shop. <laughs> my gravy boat's in the shop. My gravy boat. I had to send it in. I had to get it winterized. <laughs> we can call it the gravy boat of doom. I think we can probably do better. Fuck you. <laughs> that was genius. <laughs> we could do blood platelets and we could spell it P L A T T lets. <laughs> 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 this is why no one listens to us. <laughs> so, so, we should probably try to do a wrap up of the show just in case Kate and I aren't able to do a wrap up. Wrap, 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 wrap up? Wrap, 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 wrap. I've got a whole list of things for the end of the show, too, because I have notes and, and structure and goings on. Structure and fucking discipline. If it's something I care about, I'll put a lot of work into it. It's just I don't care about very much. So it's like it's like this and theater. Like, those are the things I care about. So those are the things that get attention. You're lucky you have things you care about. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I just got to get the rest of the world out of my way so I can focus on this. All right. Um, boy, I guess... This is usually the part where we decide what we're going to do on the next show, what kind of theme and topic. Got it. Do you want that kind of responsibility? <laughs> that feels like it could end up being a crushing weight. And the only thing that is coming to mind is hair and noodles. And I'm pretty sure there's no angel hair pasta ghost. There's the flying spaghetti monster, but that's more of a religion. Spirit ghosts, like ghost spirits or... God, what am I trying to tell you? Alcohol ghosts. Alcohol ghosts? Yeah, there's an episode, so going back to Supernatural, there's an episode <laughs> of uh, an entity called a, sh a shoji, which is an alcohol spirit. Oh, and okay. I, I literally have no idea if there's even such a thing or if they just pulled it out of their backsides. 
All right. Well, that's what we're going to run with now. Okay, then. Well, I, it really fits the theme of the show. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yay. Alcohol ghosts. Alcohol spirit ghosts. I had no idea such a thing existed. We probably would have done it sooner if we had. Right. Okay. So um, check out our show notes. We will have, at, at the very least, the picture from the USS Constellation in the notes. We may have some other things. Hopefully, we will have a recipe for Kate's drink in the show notes. Um, I don't know. I get tired of talking about the show notes. Nobody reads them anyway. We should, <laughs> we should like tell her that the drink has to be like some obscure bullshit. And she, you know, like here, make it out of, I don't know. Well, you said a shoji. Is that like a Japanese or yeah, Asian? Yeah, it is. Some Japanese. Sort? Japanese. Okay. Japanese alcohol spirit. I don't know how versed she is in Japanese alcohol, so that might send her for a loop, right? That might be hard enough. <laughs> okay, then. My my work here is done. I have all right. sprinkled in the frustration to right. all my friends. The, it's not a good podcast if we're not constantly trying to fuck each other up in the process. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, on Spotify. Spotify. I don't know if they, they, I don't think they've branded their podcast thing. On Spotify, one of the 8 billion shows that's not Joe Rogan or Call Her Daddy. Be sure to check out our website. That's where we put our show notes. That's where we put recipes. If you've missed any of the old recipes, I have been occasionally doing ghost story write-ups from some of our tales on there. Uh, just because those are the only things that seem to gather evergreen hits to the site. You can support us, if you so dare, through Patreon, through our t-shirt shop at TeePublic, or through Anchor as well. And I'm, I'm slowly getting our back catalog back up on YouTube, because we had a hang up there for a while where the video editor I was using broke severely, and starting to get that back together, so that's going to be going on soon. You can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, you can find us on Instagram. I don't know, we're not especially active there. I've gotten less active on Twitter because my Twitter follower count just keeps climbing and climbing, and my listener count just keeps dropping and dropping, so I don't know that I see the point there anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. Mel, do you have anything that you want to add? Anything that I should add that I've forgotten? Usually Katie covers on the stuff that I forget, so that's on you this time. Hair. Hair. That's what I have to to offer you and to add to the conversation. We almost did hair this, but... I'm going to go hide in the dryer. We should wrap it up. Please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't become our next ghost. Although... That's two for two. That's two for two. We didn't mention yeah. that you nailed... You nailed the uh, opening with uh, a drink with death. And now you nailed... Don't end up our next ghost... Although, I think you guys mentioned this sort of once um, on one of your shows, but if you are going to end up one of our next ghosts, make sure we find out about it and, you know, there's some, like, video footage or photos or something. Like if, Kate, if says, Kate says that. I don't want any culpability coming back on me. That's, that's fair. That's not my idea. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> just, just... Use the top search uh, result. Oh, my Google phone is telling me some search results when I didn't ask it to. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's just pretend Katie just said everything that I said for the last 30 seconds. Okay, that's Kay. right. Knock it off, Katie. We're, uh, God damn it, Katie. Trying to stay legally solid here with my parody ads of litigious companies we started <laughs> the show with. All right, um, I guess that's it for now. We will see you again in a couple weeks. Bye. Peace out, y'all. Have, have fun. Have fun.